Welcome to Christian Worship in God's House at St. John's. We gather together on this fifth Sunday after Pentecost and join in divine service setting four. It uh, begins for us on page 203 of our hymnals, or you may follow along in your service folder. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing together our intro from Psalm 107, as printed in your service folder.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray the collect of the day as printed for us in our service folder. Almighty God, in your mercy, guide in the course of this world so that your church may joyfully serve you in godly peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading is recorded for us in the book of Job, chapter 38, beginning at verse 1. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Dress for action like a man. I will question you, and you will make it known to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On where, on what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy, or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb? When I made clouds its garment, and thick darkness its swaddling band, and prescribed limits for it, and set bars and doors, and said, Thus far shall you come, and no farther, and here shall your proud waves be stayed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We speak the words of the gradual. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. This is unsearchable. On your wondrous works I will meditate. And I will declare your greatness. The epistle reading is recorded for us in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, beginning at verse 1. Working together with him, then, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says... In a favorable time, I listened to you, and in a day of salvation, I have helped you. Behold, now is the favorable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We put no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, by great endurance in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, the Holy Spirit, genuine love, by truthful speech and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, through the honor and dishonor, through slander and praise. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet well-known, as dying and behold, we live, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing, yet possessing everything. We have spoken freely to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted in your own affections. In return, I speak as to children, widen your hearts also. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the Alleluia and verse.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the fourth chapter. On that day, when evening had come, Jesus said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. And other boats were with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat, so that the boat was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. He said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who then is this, that even wind and sea obey him? This is the gospel of the Lord. We join together in the common confession of our Christian faith. We use the words of the Nicene Creed. They are printed for us on page 206 or the inside back cover of our hymnals. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. We sing as our hymn of the day, hymn 717, Eternal Father Strong to Save. Hymn 717, we replace the two stanzas, stanzas two and three in the music, with the alternate stanzas two and three on the upper right-hand side of the next page. Hymn 717.
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God, our Heavenly Father, from our risen and living Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for our sermon meditation is our Old Testament reading from Job, chapter 38. There are 42 chapters in this book of Job. I am going to give you the two-minute review of the entire book. Feel free to time me. Job is introduced as one who is blessed by God and also very faithful to God. In chapter 1, the devil comes into God's presence in order to accuse people of their sin. And God says to the devil, what about Job? He's real faithful to me. And the devil says, well, that's, that's just because you give him stuff. Take that stuff away and Job will turn on you in a snap. God answers, okay, if that's what you think, I'm going to let you test that theory. You can take the stuff away, but you can't touch him. And so in one day, the devil took all of Job's donkeys, oxen, camels, sheep, and servants from him. And then, worst of all, a house fell and killed all ten of his children. Job, of course, mourned but he did not curse God. Chapter 2, the devil comes back to God, who points out to him, see, Job, all that you did to him, and he's still faithful to me. The devil answers, well, he has his health. You take that health away from him, and Job will turn on you in a flash. God says, okay, I'll let you test that theory. You can afflict his body, but you can't touch his life. And so the devil covers Job's body from head to toe with painful sores. Even his wife says to him, Job, just give up. Curse God and die. But Job still remains faithful to the Lord. Job, however, does question why this is happening. Three friends come to Job and his suffering, and with friends like these, who needs enemies? They say, Job, you're suffering you must have done something really bad. Just confess it, get it out, and suffer the consequences. Job, for his part, says, I'm too good to suffer. I don't deserve this. And so for 35 chapters, Job and his friends speak past one another, each side thinking they knew how God should operate. Finally, Job cries out, Show up, Lord, and explain yourself. Put your complaint against me into writing. Well, now, in chapter 38, God shows up, not to answer Job's questions, but to ask some of his own. And in doing so, he is not condemning or humiliating Job, but he is bringing him to repentance and to an even greater faith in God's care for his creatures. Well, I'm sure that none of us have ever had as bad of a day as Job did when he lost almost everything in his life. But we all have suffered, haven't we? What might be your share of suffering in this life? Is it not enough money to pay too many bills? Do you have a dead-end job that you hate but you can't get out of it? Are you suffering from a poor relationship with a parent or a child or a spouse? Perhaps you have an illness that threatens your health or a chronic disease that gives you constant pain. Perhaps you are suffering the loss of a loved one to physical death. And so you are saying, why? Why, God, am I suffering? I don't deserve this. Sure, I'm not perfect, but I'm more good than I am bad. I am a nice person. I am good to my neighbors. I pay my taxes, and after all, I haven't killed anyone. I may not be in God's hall of fame or have a spot on his honor roll of great humans, but still, he should be impressed enough with me that I shouldn't suffer. Yet suffering happens. No matter how good we think that we are, 
None of us deserves a break from the troubles of life in this sinful world. These are the problems that our human rebellion against our Creator have brought upon ourselves. As Job learned, not one of us is free from the hatred and the rejection of God that is now part of our sinful human nature. If we think that we are so good that we do not deserve to suffer, we only show that we really don't know who we are. On the other hand, we may feel that any and every problem that we have in life is actually God who is punishing us for a specific sin that we did. Oh, oh, I have this toothache. I must have said too many bad words. Or, my tree fell in last night's storm. My neighbor's tree didn't fall. He must be living better than what I am. Or, if only I had treated my parent or my spouse better, God would not have taken that person away from me. Or, I must have done something really bad to deserve this heart condition or this cancer diagnosis that I have. With this view, we think that God is out to get us, that he is vengeful, that he is just looking for sins that he could punish us for. If we believe that God is seeking revenge upon us for the sins that we commit, we show that we really do not know who our God is. Well, in this passage, Job needs his own lesson in who God is. For four chapters, beginning with this passage, God asks questions that Job cannot answer. These are questions about God's creation of the universe. They are questions about how God cares for that creation and for the creatures that are in it. Well, Job's head must have been spinning like he was on a ride at the fireman's picnic, for those questions are coming at him one after another. But the purpose of God's rapid-fire questions to Job is to convince Job that God does know what he is doing, far more than what Job realizes. God controls what we cannot control. So when our lives seem to be out of control, we have a God who is in charge of the situation for us. God does not answer our questions about suffering with the word why. He doesn't give us an explanation. Instead, God's answer to our suffering is who? When the storm on a storm on the Sea of Galilee makes experienced fishermen, these disciples of Jesus, fear for their lives, God's answer to them is one who is in the boat with them. Jesus Christ, the very same God who had fixed limits for the seas during the days of creation, now stands up and shows his power over the waters. Jesus commands them, you may come no farther. Here is where your proud waves halt. And the wind dies down and the waves are calm. The scared disciples now ask the question, who is this? That even the wind and the waves obey him. Well, this is the very same God who spoke to Job out of the storm in our text. Where is Jesus when the storms of life cause us suffering. Well, he is on the cross suffering the punishment of our sins and dying the death that those sins deserved. Where is Jesus when we are living in fear? He is present for us with us in his word of the Holy Bible. He is living in us through the water and word of our holy baptism. And he is present here in this Lord's Supper with his body and blood for the forgiveness of our sins. By these means of God's grace, the Holy Spirit calms our fears with our triune God's forgiveness of those sins. Where is Jesus when our life seems to be spinning out of control? He is right beside us in order to carry us through those troubles. 
Conversely, in times of joy, we hear Jesus whispering his love for us through his word and through his sacraments. And when we face decisions for our everyday lives, Jesus uses his word of the Holy Bible to speak his will to us. And when we are suffering from life in this sinful world, Jesus is shouting his forgiveness to us. Because of Jesus' resurrection from the dead, we now live in the hope and in the confidence that we will live with him for eternity, apart from and no longer troubled by the evil and the suffering of this rebellious world. As the uh, famous radio commentator Paul Harvey would say, now for the rest of Job's story. Though Job questioned God's work and his ways, he kept his faith in God's plan and purposes and goodness. In the last chapter of the book, God applauds Job for his faithfulness, and he restores to Job more earthly blessings than what Job had before. So what is the rest of our suffering's story? When in the midst of our troubles, we do not see God's work for us. That typically comes through hindsight. But we do know what God has promised to us, that the suffering for our sins has been completed for us by God's own Son, Jesus Christ, upon the cross. The light and the temporary troubles that we now experience in this world are nothing compared to the joy and the glory that are awaiting us in the resurrected life that we will live with our Lord Jesus Christ. In his name, amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in our Lord and in our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In our prayer of the church, we remember those listed for us under healing and comfort. Uh, we add to that list St. John's member Caden Leifer as he is hospitalized. Uh, we give thanks to God for those who serve us in our nation's military and as emergency personnel. We give thanks to God for the ministry of our vacation Bible school that we experienced this past week. We give thanks to God for the birth of a daughter to Jason and Chelsea Ripplemeyer on June the 14th. We pray for the wedding of Sarah Roy and Alex Rohrbach that will take place this coming Saturday. We pray for the call that I have received to teach at St. Paul Lutheran High School. We pray for favorable weather for farming and safety in the fields this week. And we pray for the program called Vocatio that is taking place at our Concordia Seminary this week, a high school program that includes our member Brian Leifer. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We stand as we join in the prayer of the church. We thank you, Lord, for your steadfast love and your wondrous works to the children of men. You hold power over wind and waves, sin and death. Deliver us from every trouble and distress and bring us at last to our eternal home. Lord, in your mercy. Dear Lord, let your grace be proclaimed through every hardship, struggle, and suffering but also by joy and celebration. We thank you for all those who participated in our Vacation Bible School this past week. We pray that by the example of many faithful believers, we see ourselves to be rich and alive towards you, despite every opposition from this sinful world. For since we have Jesus as our Savior, we do possess everything. We pray that you would bless the uh, Vocatio program taking place this week at Concordia Seminary, including the participation of our member Brian. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, you open wide the hearts of Christians to love and serve one another, especially within the home, between husbands and wives, parents and children. We join with Chelsea, Jason, and their families in thanking you for the birth of their daughter, Paige Christine. Grateful that you have brought both mother and child safely through this delivery. 
We trust that your Holy Spirit will guide these parents in raising their daughters to know your son Jesus as the Lord of their lives and their Savior from sin. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord of all love that is true and pure, we thank you for joining Sarah and Alex together in the union of holy marriage. We trust that you will bless their wedding day with your joyful presence among their family and friends. In their marriage life, let their love be genuine, their speech truthful, and their patience with one another constant. By your Holy Spirit at work in them, may they live by God's love and therefore unashamed to serve one another in that love. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, you rule this world by your mighty power. Give to our civil servants, military members, law enforcement officers, and emergency responders a respect and recognition of your creation and its nature. When they use the authority given them from you, let it be in accord with your good design for our world and not the corruption of sin, which they are to rebuke and correct for the good of their citizens. Lord, in your mercy. Mighty Lord, you command wind and wave. Out of your mercy, spare us from disaster. Give success to crops, send suitable rain for the earth, give protection to those who work the land, tend the livestock, and those who are endangered by storms on land, sea, or air. Give us faith both to call to you in trouble and to trust that you will work everything for our good, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord of the Church, you provide your people with the preaching and teaching of your saving word. We pray for your guidance in the decision of how best to serve the ministry needs of St. Paul Lutheran High School and here at St. John's Lutheran Church as I consider your calls to both of these ministries. We trust that your Holy Spirit will work during this time of my deliberation. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Father, you see that we are perishing, yet you bid us to set our fears aside and trust in you for the sake of Christ, by whose blood we have received peace for our troubled consciences. Do not reject our prayers for their faithlessness, but teach us to trust in you fully. Give your protection and peace to those in need, especially as we remember Mary, Roger, Christine, Ruth, Pastor Cohen, Julie, Jay, Susie, Marcy, Ashlyn, Gerald, Tyson, Caden, Mary, Ted, Richard, Ron, and those we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Holy Lord, we shout for joy as Christ Jesus gives to us his true body and blood in the Lord's Supper. Let us not doubt, but firmly believe your word that you who formed our world and its matter know well how to be present for us and, and our forgiveness in this sacrament. Lord, in your mercy. Hear us, Heavenly Father, for the sake of Christ Jesus, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As we welcome forward our worship offerings, we join in the singing of the offertory as printed for us in our service folder. We continue with the service of the sacrament. It begins for us on page 208 of our hymnals, the service of the sacrament, page 208. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Give them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God. 
for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment, you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy, you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night on which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. 